Good morning. We would like to let you all know that this lesson next week will be our last one in this quarter. So we are planning on taking the months of June and July off and we will be coming back with the fall quarter starting in August. So make sure that when you're looking for the lesson, you realize that we are not recording during those two months. Our lesson today is called The Nature of Christian Freedom. Where do we find freedom to experience life as God desires it? We must love others as ourselves. Jewish families were told by God what to do. They had circumcision, they had dietary and Sabbath laws. It was easy for them to know what it was that God wanted from them. But through Christ, God has created a new family whose distinguishing mark is love. We have freedom from and for something. Paul suggests God has called us to embrace love as the purpose of our freedom. Barbara, you are reading the lesson. Okay. Good morning. This morning we're going to read from Galatians 5, 1 through 15. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you, if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is applied, obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. You were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? Such provision does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough. I am confident about you and the Lord that you will not think otherwise. But whoever it is that is confusing you will pay the penalty. But, my friends, why am I being persecuted if I am still preaching circumcision? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would castrate themselves. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Thank you, Barbara. Jack, you are talking about the right yoke. The right yoke. <clears throat> yes, I am. Well, you know, when I uh, think of the word yoke, there are two things come to my mind. First, I think, uh, is the very familiar wooden beam that goes across the neck of two oxen uh, to make sure that they are pulling together when they are pulling a load. That's certainly one familiar uh, sign of yoke. Another one uh, that comes to my mind was used back certainly in the 1970s to describe certain churches. If uh, two or more churches were sharing the same pastor, they were said to be yoked to that pastor. 
<laughs> and uh, I don't know if that term is used anymore today or not, but it was uh, back in the 70s, I know. Well, people during Jesus' time certainly knew what yoke meant. It meant two things to them. First was the same thing that I talked about. The yoke was the big wooden beam that went across the necks of the animals as they pulled together in the field. But also in the Roman Empire, frequently slaves were yoked by having a collar put on their necks so that they would be identif identified as slaves. Um, in, in the Hebrew um, scriptures, the Old Testament, the word yoke is actually mentioned 53 times. Uh, first in Exodus where God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be slaves no more. I have broken the bars of your yoke so that you may walk upright again. Uh, we're discussing, as uh, Barbara has already mentioned and Betsy, the subject of Christian freedom during the month of May. And one of the comments that Paul makes concerning Christian freedom is today's lesson from Galatians, uh, when he stands, says, stands fast in liberty to which Christ has made you free and do not be entangled again in the yoke of slavery. Uh, Paul is contending that Christ came to set believers free from a burdensome, legalistic existence as slaves to the law. And Christians must ensure that they don't come under the yoke of the law again, according to Paul. Jesus uses the word yoke in Matthew uh, 11, 29, and 30, when he invites followers to take up his yoke upon themselves and learn from him in order to find rest, uh, rest for their souls. He says the yoke is easy and the burden is light if you take upon his yoke. So that's the use of yoke uh, and the right yoke is the one that Jesus is talking about. So we'll go back to Betsy and she's going to talk about taking off heavy burdens Heavy burdens or laws are what we're talking about. Galatians is about freedom. How can love come from freedom, not obligation? Christians were freed from Jewish law. Salvation does not come from following the law. Through the Holy Spirit, we receive freedom to love and serve others because Christ loves us. He teaches us how to live our lives. He gives us the power to love others as ourselves. Salvation means drawing near to Jesus, who lived, died, and was resurrected to save us. God made us to be loving human beings. We are freed to become more like God, connected, caring, and loving. The triune God transforms us and gives us strength to follow his love. Okay, Barbara, how about stepping into the word, world? <laughs> Okay. As believers, we want to try to do the right things. God wants us to love. Even though it can seem impossible, we try. We might sometimes justify ourselves by saying, well, we love someone, but we don't like their ways. God wants us to have a relationship with him. Okay, we'll try to be faithful, to pray, read the Bible, and attend church regularly. God doesn't want us to look at the obedience of rules and laws for salvation, does he? So we'll do our best to let go of the security and good feelings that we have when we obey the rules. We'll try to do what God wants us to do. However, we who are people who are careful to try to do the right thing can easily fall into a trap. 
we work hard on nurturing relationship with God, our, nurturing our relationship with God through church attendance, Bible study, reading, and other spiritual practices. At times, they do really help us draw near to God, and we rejoice when we experience the can companionship of Jesus and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. However, there are times when God does seem distant and we might become discouraged and be tempted to discontinue our spiritual practices, such as praying, attending church, and so on. But we definitely need to continue to engage in them. When we continue with these practices, they'll become a habit and over time, can help change us into a different person. Persistent prayer and constant patterns of Bible reading, Sabbath keeping, fasting, helping others, and other spiritual practices really do deform us. However, they can cause us to fall into a trap. We let these things that we do, we place our focus on the reason we are doing them. We may value the spiritual practices themselves, instead of the person we desire to draw near, God. We can place our identity and our faithfulness rather than our acceptance into God's family through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, not anything that we have done. In our study of Galatians, we learn from Paul that love is what matters, love for God and love for others. Habits and structures help us learn love and help our ability to love. But how do we dis balance the disciplined actions to help us grow in love with the call to the simple straightforward of love for God and for others? The key must be in continued affirmation that nothing we can do will make God love us less. That's sometimes hard for us to accept when we mess up or when we realize that God loves the man that we saw in the paper today who beat his four-year-old son to death as much as he loves us. We need to seek out and remind us every minute of God's grace as we engage in practices that tra transform us. The Jews in Paul's day said, one cannot be a Jew unless circumcised. Many Christians today believe one cannot be a Christian unless he or she attends church or maybe practice another spiritual thing. But the truth is, truly drawing near to God matters most of all, and the true God shapes us, enfolds us, and loves us as he draws us near to him. Thank you, Barbara. Jack, will you please end us with prayer? Sure, let's pray. Holy Father, here we are. We are here today having studied your word once again. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and study your word. Help us to understand the true meaning of Christian love. Help us to accept those people of whom we do not approve. And as Joe Morrison used to say in Sunday school, you can't do it from the heart. You do it from the mind. You must will yourself to love in Christian love. We pray that you give us that will to love those who are not lovable. We thank you for Waverly Road Church and all who belong to it. We pray that our church will continue to flourish and represent your word in this community and to others around the world as we do mission projects. We thank you for our pastor, Colin. We thank you for our staff. As we go into these summer months, uh, we pray that you will give us rest and encouragement to come back uh, on the 1st of August to resume our Sunday school lessons uh, for those who would tune in on a weekly basis. For we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Have a good vacation, Howard. <laughs>